Today I'd like to look at a 1763 study by Lowley, and I think it illustrates an interesting pawn breakthrough and an idea that can be applied to a lot of games, and it also shows a lot about drawing ideas in king and pawn endings. <coughs> so, unlike most pawn breakthroughs, um, here we have both the kings involved, and it makes it a lot harder for white to sort of queen the pawn, because black will always be ready to meet an advancing pawn. So really there's only one try here for, win for a win for white, or one winning idea. So let's look at the other options. Um, you know, we can look at the different pawn moves. First, let's look at h6. So h6 is trying to sort of pry apart these pawns and get a past f pawn, or allow some sort of penetration of the white king. Black can try g takes h6, though, and after g takes h6, king f7, even though white has gotten earned a past pawn by pushing h6, this is actually a draw. And the point is that black is going to be able to keep the opposition and white is not going to be able to promote this pawn because black will end up stalemated. If, for example, f6, black, the key move is king f8 here, and if, for example, king e6, king e8, and as we can see, white is not able to promote because if he tries f7, we have here, and now the only king move that keeps the pawn protected leads to stalemate. Black has no moves. So as we see, h6 takes, takes, king f7. This is position as a draw. We saw what happens if white tries f6. If white tries something fancy like king e4, black can just come forward with king f6, king f4, and he's just going to keep his king on f6 and f7, and as soon as white tries to get to bring the king forward, black is going to be okay by just playing this, and now the key move again is here, and if something like this, here, and as we'll see, again, this is a draw, because the only way for white to defend the pawn leads to stalemate. So h6 does not work. That's not. Gonna, it does get a pass pawn, but white is able to get, or sorry, black is able to get into a drawn king and pawn ending. And that's going to be a key idea here in this pawn breakthrough where both the kings are involved, is that even you need to create a breakthrough that gives you a pass pawn and a winning position. So h6 doesn't work. So now let's look at f6. f6 is going to end up pretty much the same way. f6 takes, takes, king f7, and this look sh should look familiar um, to what we were looking at before. This is a draw. If, for example, here, and then say here. The key idea here, though, is that if back, here, here, check in the same way, it seems like if this position were black to move, black would lose because he's got to bring his king out, and then king b7 is going to win. So it seems like white can just give black the move by pushing here, but if you'll notice, this covers the only square, so this position becomes stalemate. So again, we have a draw. So f6 fails by just trading. Okay, f6 fails by just trading. And so the other pawn move, g6, actually turns out to be the only way to break through here. There is one other move that, that white can use to win, and that's king d5. Although the way white wins generally is going to look the same as in the game. White's going to either threaten g6 to improve the position of his king, or just come back to e5 and play g6. So these lines will be similar to the game. So the best move here, and one that wins the quickest, is g6. Now it's kind of surprising because it seems like black can lock up the pawns, but it actually goes into a winning king and pawn ending. If, for example, h takes g6, whoops, white has h takes g6, and now the black king's poor position is going to sort of cost black the game. For example, king f8, and now king e6 is not going to work because black can seize the opposition with king e8, but black, sorry, white can play king d6. And now if king e8, king e6, the black king can't come here because the white king will get to this pawn and win, so king f8 is the only try. But as we'll see, the black king is running out of moves. Now, white needs to be careful not to come to f8 or f7 because that's stalemate. But white has the nice f6, and the only move for black is to take. And now white doesn't take the pawn. White plays here, and the only move for black is here. And now we have g7, king h7, g8 queen, queen g6 mate. So as we can see, after g6, h takes g6 loses. And that's because of the poor position of black's king, and white is able to penetrate. So the only other try is h6. Keep in mind, any king move is just going to be met by g takes h7, and then we're going to push the pawn and queen. So h6 is the only other try, and now we play the nice move 
Well, first I want to look at f6. It seems like f6 is the most logical move. I mean, it forces the creation of a protected pass pawn, but this actually is not good enough to win. If, for example, g takes f6, king f5, black is winning the pawn, sorry, white, but this position, even though white has a protected pass pawn, is a draw. If, for example, king g8, if g7 here, king h7 is a draw. White can't play king f7. This is, again, a stalemate, so he can't make any moves that defend the pawn, and it's a draw. So instead of g7, if something like king f5, black is just going to play king g7 and king g8 and just sort of keep his king back and forth on these squares. And as soon as white comes here, he's going to play king f8 and draw in the way we just looked at. Furthermore, if something like this, again, black is just going to keep shuffling back and forth, and it's going to be a draw. So f6 check doesn't actually work because black, again, can go into this drawn position, sort of a fortress position where... White can't promote because he'll end up stalemating black. So the only try after h6 is actually the surprising looking king d5. And what's going to happen is we're going to allow the black king to sort of get at these white pawns, but at the cost of allowing white to promote. So king f6 is really the only try here. If, for example, king d7, just f6 is going to win right away. The king is too far from the pawns to stop them. So king f6 is the only try. Now king e4. Now keep in mind, if the black king comes back to e7, we have king e5. And now if king d7, f6 is going to win. And if king f8, this will look a lot like what we just looked at with king d6. And again, we're going to force the king into the corner, play f6, and promote. So king e7 fails back here after king e4. So the only try is really to stay aggressive. And so black is, it seems like black is getting a little counterplay, but after king e5 we're going to see that white is finally going to break through. King takes h5, and now the key move is king e6. The only move here for black to try to stay in the game is king g5, and now we have the winning pawn breakthrough. You see it? f6. This is really nice, because we've ended up sacrificing two of our pawns, because we only need one pawn to promote. So if, say, king takes g6, f7, and there's no way to prevent the promotion of the pawn and a queen. So after f6, g takes, king takes g6 doesn't work, and if g takes f6, g7, white's going to promote and win the game. So this was a 1763 study by Lolly, and it shows a critical pawn breakthrough, and it also shows some drawing ideas for black, such as this nice position where white has a protected